everybody everybody please settle down fast and please uh, ask everybody who's outside to come and sit inside the bar we'll be starting oh. the enthusiasts i am adrija bose and i am yashoda satya and it is it is our absolute pleasure to welcome you to the celebration of national rail transport day at gs rail transport has been the backbone of a country's infrastructure connecting cities towns and remote regions and facilitating the movement of goods and people with efficiency and reliability as we mark this significant occasion we reflect on the pivotal role technology and skills play in shaping the future of the railway sector so let's embark on a journey of exploration and discovery as we celebrate national rail transport day under the theme of technology and skills for the railway sector together let's honor the legacy of rail transport while embracing the opportunities that lie ahead in this dynamic and ever evolving industry in today's event we delve into the transformative impact of technology and importance of cultivating skills within the railway industry the lamp a symbol of history awaits illumination through our collective effort let's ignite not only its flame but also our passion innovation and camaraderie i request our esteemed guests to please come forward for the lighting of the lamp please sir the lamp the symbol of its voice illumination
I kindly request all the esteemed guests please take their seats on the stage. Shri Ashwini Lohan, former chairman, Railway Board, former CEO of Air India, Shri Niki Tripathi, former Ra chairman, Railway Board, Shri Rajendra Prasad, former managing director, NHSR Sale, Shri Sanjeev Gurd, secretary general, CIND, Dr. Sathya Gupta, president, Vimasai Society of Peace. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, before we officially commence our event, we would like to extend a warm welcome to our esteemed guests by presenting them with a shot. I request our honorable VC sir, Professor Dr. Manoj Chakri sir, to felicitate our guests. We have with us Sri Ashwini Lohani. Shri Niki Tripathi. Shri Rajarin Prasad. Shri Sanjeev Kar. Dr. Sathya Gupta. Thank you, sir. It is a privilege to hear from a leader whose guidance shapes the very essence of our institution. Please join me in welcoming Professor Dr. Manoj Chaudhary, sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Pratishakti Shakti Vishwavidyalaya, to deliver the welcome address. Good evening. I am extremely honored and privileged that today we have such galaxy of leaders of the rail industry, the leaders who shaped the Indian railways to what it is today. I'm extremely privileged to have Sri Aswini Lohani ji, former chairman railway board and also the head of Air India. Sri Vinay Tripathi ji, the former chairman railway board, Rajinder Prasad ji, former MD, National High Speed Rail Corporation, Sanjeev Garg ji, the Secretary General CILT and former MD Pipawa and Dr. Satya Gupta, formerly with Intel and currently the President of VLSA Society of India. Today is indeed a great day. 1853 is when the first train was operated in India and Indian Railways has a great history and a great legacy and indeed a great future, as we will hear from all the leaders today. Today in Gati Sakti Viswedhyale, India's only university in the transportation and logistics sector, India's only university in the transportation and logistics sector that is unique because it is operated by the Ministry of Railways. And that is why today the celebration at Gati Sakti Viswedhyale of the National Rail Transport Day is both timely as well as very essential. Most of our programs, as you know, are in rail engineering. We are located in the campus of railways. We are, our chancellor is the minister of railways. We are driven 
and administratively controlled by the Ministry of Railways. So it is not an exaggeration if I say that railway is in our blood. Every single thing that we ought to do, every single thing that we have to do going ahead, every single thing that we study here, do research here, railway has to be the first and the most essential component of that. While Gati Sakti Viswadale self focus on the entire transportation sector, starting with railways, aviation, shipping, ports, waterways, roads, highways, and everything. Railways is the fundamental thing. Currently, all the programs, academic programs we have are in rail engineering. We are going to launch more, many more programs in rail engineering as we will talk further. Given that many of our dignitaries are visiting Gati Sakti Viswedale, first time after Gati Sakti Viswedale was notified as a central university in December 2022, I will maybe take around 10 minutes of time explaining where we have progressed so far, because it is important to understand from them their expectations when they set up this whole university in their direction where it should go. And therefore, it is important to understand where we stand. Today, we are 763 students, us, out of which 243 will have a farewell party today across BTEC, MBA, BBA, and BSc programs. These 243 students are graduating uh, with the end semester exams commencing 19th of April till 30th of April. We currently have five BTEC programs. We have a BSc and BBA program. We have MBA programs that are in operation for quite some time. As of today, we have 27 full time faculty members. We have four distinguished visiting professors, including Dr. Satya Gupta on the dais today. We have former chairman railway board, Sri Lahoti ji as one of the distinguished visiting professor. We have former logistics secretary, Pavan Agarwal ji as the, as the um, distinguished visiting professor. Professor Prabhuda Ganguly as the IPR uh, leading expert in India as the distinguished visiting professor. We are also privileged that we have one professor of practice, um, Professor Pradeep Kumar Garth ji. He is also our dean of continuing and executive education. He is from the railway family having worked in the railways for more than 35 years and retired at the top position of the Secretary of the Railway Board. We are in the process to hire more faculty members and hopefully by August of this year, we should have more than 50 regular faculty members. In addition, we have 50 visiting faculty members, most of them from different IITs, IIMs and NITs, but around 12 of them leading railway experts who are teaching several programs and courses related to railway engineering at Kati Sakti Viswedal. And we look forward to having many more of them. I am very happy to note that Sri Sanjeev Garji on the dais with me is teaching one important course on green logistics already. And we are looking forward to many more railway professionals helping us trying to teach the latest and the best in the railway technology to our students. As a university, when we had to define our vision statement, for the 21st century university, we zeroed on to only two words, that is innovation-led and industry-driven. Every single thing we do has to be inspired by these two words, that is we have to innovate for India, we have to innovate for the world in the 21st century, and every single thing we do at the university has to be driven by stakeholders, industry being a synonymous with the stakeholders. Curriculum we design, curriculum and the content we deliver, and the graduates we prepare for. Everything has to be for the stakeholders. I am very happy to note that last year we had five patents granted from the Innovation Lab University. And this year, just yesterday, we have one more patent that has been published uh, by Dr. Chintala. In terms of industry driven approach, we have prepared our curriculum for the rail engineering with significant inputs from Ministry of Railways, with the different production units of the Ministry of Railways, and with several rail industries related to. Siemens or LNT or Elstom and so on. I'm very happy to note and to update the members on the dais that we have signed big agreements with Airbus, the leading uh, uh, aircraft manufacturer in the world, with the DPIT, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, with Nippon Koi, the Japanese company, the, uh, the Delhi Metro Rail Corporation, the one of the first to start urban transportation in the form of metro, 
uh, with Indian Maritime Ministry for the Ministry Port Shipping and Waterways, Karmyogi Bharat for the capacity building, and with several academic institutes who are now our partner institutes such as IIM Mumbai, IIT Gandhinagar, IIT Jodhpur, Bits Pilani, and the uh, St. Petersburg State Transport University, Moscow. Today, I am very happy that Apart from regular education programs, Dati Sakti Vishwadhyaya has also evolved to conduct executive education program as we speak today. A program on the rail grinding technology involving approximately 30 officers of Indian Railways and I welcome them to this function is being organized with Professor Pradeep Garg as the lead and the main coordinator from uh, Dati Sakti Vishwadhyaya. Recently, for the Indian Railway Management Service Probationers, Dati Sakti Vishwadhyaya conducted a four-week management module uh, at Iritam Lakhau. Going ahead, we shall intensify and accelerate our progress on the executive education programs. In the month of May, we have a plan along with Airbus to launch first executive program related to uh, aircraft safety engineering and aircraft maintenance somewhere uh, location most likely being in Delhi. So we are trying to expand our presence across railways and various forms of transportation for regular education and for executive education. In terms of regular education, further, this year we are introducing eight new academic programs. We are introducing BTEC in Aviation Engineering along with Airbus as our partner. We are introducing MTech programs for the first time, MTech in Intelligent Transport Systems, MTech in Rail Engineering for the working professors. That means officers of Indian Railways and particularly those who are working in the railway sector across industries will be able to upskill themselves by by enrolling at the hybrid mode programs. So these programs at Dati Sakti Vishwadhyaya for working professors are in hybrid mode in the sense most of the classes will happen either on late evenings or weekends and maybe two weeks per semester is when these working professors have to visit GSE. So we have two MTech programs. We are starting new MBA programs, MBA program in multimodal transportation, MBA program in metro rail management, MBA program in port and shipping logistics, MBA logistics and supply chain management, many of them for working professionals. For the first time, we are also starting a PhD program, again for the working professionals. So all officers who are working in Indian railways in the railway sector and doing leading and cutting edge research to solve the problems in the field for the railway sector are welcome to apply for PhD program at Dati Sakti Vishwadale, once again in a hybrid mode to facilitate these working professionals to upskill themselves and to take higher order degree with them. These are some of the important initiatives. Being under Ministry of Railways, it is our mandate as well as our duty that firstly, we take care of the working professors in the Ministry of Railways and upskill themselves to prepare them for a bright future of railways tomorrow. Further. We are in the process to finalize agreements with top universities around the world, like Monash University. We have an agreement that is almost been finalized and is pending to be signed. Today, we will have two MOUs being signed, one related to uh, one with the Chartered Institute of Logistics and um, Transportation, an important uh, professional organization dealing with the logistics and transportation sector, providing many opportunities for our students, for faculty members, for students internship placement, many of the opportunities. Second is with the BLSI Society of India, which is an important player in the semiconductor and electronics industry, which will again help us more in terms of opportunities, more placement opportunities, more learning opportunities, more joint workshops. As India becomes a semiconductor nation, as all of us know, with the recent announcements that have been made by the government of India, Dati Sakti Vishwajale shall not lag, it shall take steps from day one to encourage and promote semiconductor and electronics revolution in the transportation industry and particularly from the railways. If I move forward, some of the important other topics that I want to mention is with the agreement with Ministry of Commerce and Industry, DPIIT Logistics Division, Gati Sakti Vishwadhyaya is the central nodal agency to train the civil, service, civil services officers across states and centers on the usage of the PM Gati Sakti for both infrastructure sectors as well as for the social sectors, including area development, including planning, monitoring of the projects to contain cost overruns, to contain schedule overruns for our infrastructure sector. Recently, on 8th of April, 
we conducted a big workshop right here in the same auditorium where the secretary of the DPIIT, along with more than 78 people, the nodal officers from different centralized training institutes and the state administrative training institutes and the nodal ministries participated. That emphasizes a great role and responsibility that Dati Sakti Vishwadele has, not only to provide education and the degree programs to our regular student, but to prepare a developed India by developing the working professionals and officers who are working in the field who can create superior infrastructure and logistics ecosystem for whole of India. My dear friends, India has huge expectations from all of us. We are not just a university. It is a revolution. It is the first experiment that government has done in the transportation and logistics sector. And we, being the single biggest startup, as I would say, funded solely by the Ministry of Railways, we have a big mandate and responsibility to innovate, to prepare our future, and to prepare future of human resources right here from Dati Sakti Vishwadele, who shall be leaders of the sector in, in the next decades to come. We already conducted our first convocation and we were very happy to have the chairperson of the railway board as our chief guest. In terms of placement, which is important activities, this year we had almost 100 companies that had shown interest so far. As of now, our placement is at 52% and we believe that over the next 45 days of time, we believe we can definitely move, up, move significantly up with some of the public sector units most likely to come over next six weeks or so. Further, I am very happy to notice and inform that several of the rail domain industry companies such as Webtech, Elstom, LNT, Siemens, etc. have already visited, Sistra have already visited and I believe that we have potential to attract many more rail domain companies here. We have potential to attract several PSUs like VFCCIL or RVNL or rights and so on and we are continuously trying to request them that our talented people who are trained in railway engineering uh, deserve better chances, deserve better opportunities. Of course, it is all of us. Once a company comes here, it is up to our students, up to all of us to prepare well and take that opportunity with both hands. Similarly, our university provides financial assistance to 20% of our students, being one of the very inclusive approach that we have towards the sections of the society that perhaps is not in a position to bear the cost of technical education. In addition, corporate houses like Siemens have already announced a scholarship scheme to encourage female students in the transport and logistics sector. This year alone, four first-year female students have been nominated and selected for Siemens scholarship, which is to cover them for the entire duration of their program. Chetak Foundation is already sponsoring one female student for this. There are corporate houses currently considering to sponsor significantly large number of our students and portion of students for the scholarship scheme. Our internships, which are organized and railway, Ministry of Railways and different units have been providing internships to our, uh, our students and that continues this year for the first year, second year and third year. And we have to continue having more industry immersion and industry experience as we go ahead. We have our next semester that starts on 4th of August. That is from 30th April to 4th of August in the 12 weeks duration, we have enough time from our student point of view to gain industry experience for internship. We have institutionalized several student related programs like cultural festival, sports festival, technical festival. And I'm very happy to say that many of these festivals are now sponsored by the corporate houses. What that means is that industry is taking active interest. They are watching our performance. They are watching us grow. They are watching us develop further into a world-class university. And that is where we have a a big responsibility, as I always say. In order to prepare our students more and more in the industry driven approach, over the last five, six months, our students, along with the faculty members, have participated in at least six national conferences. For example, Indian Mobile Congress, Indian Railway Equipment Exhibition, Rail, Rail India Show, in Logimet, the Logistics Conference, in Vibrant Gujarat Summit, in the recent workshop that was held between. Uh, IIT Delhi and Sofia University of Japan. These are the opportunities that our students have in order to experience what industry needs, in order to experience what the real world looks like. And I believe that these are the important experiments as we go ahead. We are in the process to build our physical infrastructure. On 1st of March, we had the Bhumi Puja. And 
as you know, the construction in the campus is ongoing. Ministry of Railways has always been very, very proactive in enabling us with the physical infrastructure support. And that is where we have our classes running, we have our hostels running, NHRCL has already been gracious enough to allow us. So we are trying to build our capacity, we are trying to leverage the current infrastructure in an optimized manner between Gati Sakti Viswedale and National Academy of Indian Railways. And we are collectively trying to move forward and create a platform where more and more officers of Indian Railways can be trained, where more and more human resources for the railway sector can be done. I will not take much time. I would like to thank you once again and wish you on the National Rail Transport Day today, an important landmark for all of us. Today's theme is technology and skills for the railway sector, something that Gati Sakti Viswedale must learn, which new technologies need to be developed, which new skills to be acquired, to be prepared, not only for our regular students, but also for officers and workforce across Indian railways. And I am very happy and once again welcome welcome all our dignitaries on the dais and want to once again wish all 243 of graduating students who shall graduate from Gati Sakti Viswidale this year and will become brand ambassadors of Gati Sakti Viswidale when they enter the workforce. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Your words always inspire us to work hard. Today, we are privileged to witness the signing of the MOU between GSV and CIRB, Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport. I request Sir Sanjeev Gurg, sir, Secretary General CIRB, and Honorable VC, sir, to sign the MOU. Can you please bring Yes. We are also grateful to witness another signing of MOU between GSB and the Real Estate Society of India. I request Dr. Sante Gupta, President of the Real Estate Society of India, and Honorable VC Sir to sign the MOU.
The comments are program. The comments are program. We are privileged to welcome five esteemed guest speakers who will graciously impart their insights and expertise in their respective fields. We are pleased to introduce Sri Ashwani Lohani, a distinguished professional with an illustrious career in Indian Railways Service of Mechanical Engineers, IRSNP. After retiring from his position in 1980, he, he currently holds the position of CEO at GMRS with notable leadership roles, including serving twice as the CMD of Air India. He successfully guided the organization towards consecutive years of operating profits. Moreover, his tenure as the chairman of Railway Board co coincided with a crucial period of reforms in the railway sector. We are privileged to have Lohani Ji join us today as we delve into the discussions about technology and skills in the railway sector. And we eagerly uh, anticipate benefiting from his insight and expertise. Please join, join me in extending a warm welcome to welcome Sri Ashwani Lohan, whose leadership and vision continue to inspire and fulfill its advancements in the transportation sector. Thank you, Dr. Manoj. My ex colleague Jibati Ji, Sanjeev, Mr. Prashad, Dr. Satya Gupta, faculty from Gati Shakti Vishwavidyalaya, as well as Nayak, railway officers, India students. First of all, I'm going to tell you about the April. I'm going to tell you about the April. I'm going to tell you about सोलह अप्रैल को हिंदुस्तान की पहली ट्रेन चली थी मुंबई और थाने के बीच में सुल्तान साहेब और सिंह तीन इंजन लगे थे उस गाड़ी में उन इंजनों का नाम है और तब से इस हफ्ते को जो हफ्ता कल्मिनेट करता है सोलह तारीख को सोलह अप्रैल में उसको रेलवे वीक के तौर पर मनाया था तो रेलवे वीक फॉर एवरीबडी हु हैज एन एसोसिएशन विथ रेलवे वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट Period in a very emotional moment also, day of 16th of April. So, both of us, my best wishes on this very important day. I've been in this hall on a number of occasions in the past. I've addressed students, I've addressed, uh, not exactly students, I've addressed professionals, railway officers, till as long as it was NIAC, before that, the railway staff college. This is my first visit. To Gati Shakti Vishwadala. And I hope that Gati Shakti Vishwadala will rise and occupy, ultimately occupy its rightful place under the sun. Providing Shakti to Gati. I think Gati Shakti ka matlab hoi hai. Gati to transport deta hai. Or usko Shakti provide karna, mission ka naam. To Gati Shakti mission ho gaya. मिशन का एक अंग ये विश्वविद्यालय हो गया जिसका काम है ट्रांसपोर्ट के सेक्टर में उसमें ट्रेनिंग और एजुकेशन के फील्ड में तैयार करना लोगों को इस ए सोल मोटो ऑफ गति शक्ति विश्वविद्यालय आई थिंक आफ्टर हियरिंग फ्रॉम द वाइस चांसलर फॉर ऑल द न्यू डेवलपमेंट विच यूर विच आर टेकिंग प्लेस वॉट एवर यू आर डूइंग आई थिंक आई थिंक यू आर इन द राइट डायरेक्शन कीप इट अप गुड जॉब बींग डन गति शक्ति Needs समन्वय coordination between various transport wings, various infrastructure wings, technology, huge induction of technology, a platform which you already have, you told me about the Gati Shakti tool, funds, a very strong will, and Last but not the least, is the biggest, the human resource 
app for that purpose. The training of the human resource and its skilling for the entire transport industry with focus on railways needs to be looked at in a holistic manner by the Gati Shakti Vishudan, both for fresh students like some of whom are passing out today or they got their farewells today and for working professionals of the transport ecosystem is sirf railway karne, but railway ka jo ecosystem hai uske liye manpower tayar karna uski manpower ko regular upscaling karna that is a work which has to be taken up on a war footing which has to be done on a war footing Indian Railways I spent my life on the Indian Railways Indian Railways is a great organization in fact the greatest of various organizations which are there. And that is why when we say Indian Railways, we say the Great Indian Railways. Great is affixed to its name. We thought manpower come away. It used to have 80 to 20 lakhs men at one point of time. It's about 12 lakhs now. 12 lakhs, even 12 lakhs makes it the largest organization under single management on the planet, not in India. Runs 22,000 trains a day, over 8,000 railway stations, handling 25 million passengers a day, with I think almost 8 to 10,000 locomotives, 60 to 70,000 coaches, 400,000 wagons. It is solid and it's big, the biggest of all organizations. And it works. Whatever may be the constraints, whether it's a constraint of fund, constraint of manpower, constraint of any other resource which is which may be required, constraint of material. But the train which has to leave the station at a particular time, right? So that is the beauty of this organization. Works delivers 24 by 7. And the finest symbol of dynamic delivery in the nation. The finest symbol, there is no better, no better symbol of dynamic delivery. And the railwaymen. The railwaymen are also unique. I worked across sectors, I worked in the tourism sector, the heritage sector, the aviation sector, the hospitality sector, and the railway. There's nobody like a railway employee who is prepared to work 24 by 7, who gives his life and soul for the organization, who is so devoted, so committed, and he makes the wheels move. What being a relevant entails, what a relevant feels, these emotions can never be allowed to be the relevant. I think having a Gatish Shakti Vishwadala which will focus on various aspects of the entire railway ecosystem, Will is definitely going to make a difference and help. You have to offer degree programs as a difference. The days of conventional education are over. Education has to be something which can get you a job. It has to be a job centric education, it has to be a skill centric education. And that is what the country also needs now. Is skills relevant to professions, professions in the transport sector in a country the size and demography of India? Now the country is also moving very fast, very, very, very fast it's going ahead. The nation on rapid path to progress, growth and development. We have to equip ourselves to handle rapid change. Things are changing very fast. Now the engineering degrees, degrees which I did 40 years back, they have totally changed. The requirements have changed, the content has changed. And it is changing at a much, much faster rate now. Now is the time of artificial intelligence. I also uh, handle engineering. College, a big engineering college. And uh, I can see that we have to quickly move to AI, artificial intelligence, AI DS, AI ML, new emerging technologies. They are required very much. So this is the time of change. So we have to equip ourselves to handle rapid change and absolutely new scenarios. We all need to learn how to embrace the unknown. Then you have to Tell your student how to embrace the unknown. And this GSC needs to focus on this. And handling the unknown is not 
not uh, my experience is because when I became a hotelier, I didn't I, I didn't know the edge of hotels when I became a chairman of Air India. I didn't know the pay of airline. They're all new areas, but it was possible with fundamental skills and fundamental attitude to handle those. That is what we have to focus on. No education is complete if it does not enable the student to imbibe the fundamental and most vital virtue of life. Technology is fine. You have to learn technology, you have to learn skills. But the fundamental virtues of life also they have to be imbibed by you as students. They are absolute honesty. Technology is the value adherence to value systems. Lack of ego and courage for doing the right. These are virtues which you have to also imbibe along with your education, your skilling, whatever you are doing in this university. In GSV has to become a university with a difference and it has to trade where others have not. Railways, I call it a Sadawar organization. Railways ka potential in this time, I am sure. Railways ka potential in this time, I am sure. Railways ka potential in this time, I am sure. Railways ka potential in this time, I am sure. Railways ka And it will always require to continuously grow. It has continuous growth potentials in both the passenger as well as freight segments. Then, therefore, we need to do a continuous upgradation of the skills. Of officers and supervisors, besides creating and sustaining an environment that is positive and motivating. DSC also needs to tailor students for managerial and supervisory personal roles for Indian Railways and its stakeholders. What innovation also? India has only about how many? 600 aircraft at present, 650 aircraft at present. A country of this size can easily do with 3,000 aircraft. So that is what is going to happen. There are a lot of aircraft on order, more than 1,000 aircraft are on order. Right? But this sector is also going to grow also because, also because the penetration rate of aviation is very, very low. And uh, there is a tremendous growth on the card for all the scheduled carriers as well as the non-scheduled carriers. And if this uh, increasing the number of aircraft will also require you to increase the size of the airports, increase the number of airports in associated sectors like ground handling, MRO, training, uh, operations. So this will require growth in that. Passenger services, retail. And we can, right now itself, we can feel, the entire air aviation sector can feel the shortage of AME and pilots which are required for the, by the airline. And sim, same is the case in other transport sectors. With, with the advent of large, advent of highways, good roads, there will be an increased requirement in the road sector also. Well, you can look at, you can look at uh, expanding into the aviation sector, look at partnerships. But this sector is going to grow, there is going to be a continuous boom in the sector for time to come. While we upgrade conventional education with skills and job orientation, we should not lose sight of the fact that the most important resource, the most important input which any organization has, which any organization wants, is human resource. HR orientation also has to be a focus area of all the students who are passing out because that has been my experience cutting across sectors that HR is the most important resource of all. Especially railways, look at railways with, with 12, 12 and a half lakh men. It has to be an HR specific organization. The HR orientation can never be lost sight of the fact. The vice chancellor talked about placement, the placements are good, but for a university, focusing on placements is also extremely, extremely important because that is the ultimate end result. The above are my initial, whatever I have spoken, they are my initial observations. All of you are experts in this field. And uh, you have to look at improving the infrastructure of the 
while you are going ahead with making a new university, you have to improve the infrastructure of the existing university also, bring a lot of shine. That is something which I find a bit missing. This educational institution should shine, should physically and literally shine. That is what can be done. You are in the right direction with the efforts, you can do it. Work on 5S certification of the campus. I recently visited the two power plants and uh, I could not have imagined that a power plant can be so damn clean. It's absolutely sparkling, shining. So that is one. And this is the alma mater of all railway officers like me. And may this alma mater of us be always on the road to progress and always be a place of pride. My best wishes to all the students, to the entire faculty of GSV, IAP, officer trainees, the students of course. Best wishes on this very unique day and a very holy day for relevant. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir, for your valuable insights. We are now privileged to welcome Mr. Vinay Kumar Tripathi, sir, a distinguished Indian Railways officer with extensive experience in railway management and administration across various levels. He has served as the Chairman of Railway Board and General Manager of Northeastern Railway Zone. He has undergone advanced management training programs in Switzerland and the USA, contributing significantly to the commissioning and indigenization of state of art previous loco locomotives for deployment within the Indian Railways. Currently, Mr. Tripathi leads a one person committee focused on railway maintenance matters. Please join us in extending a warm welcome to Sri Vika Tripathi, sir. So, please. Namaskar, Professor Dr. Manoj, our my senior colleague Ashri Lohani, other colleagues Sanjeev Garg, Rajendra Prasad, and Dr. Gupta and the Das. My other colleagues. Presently working in Gati Shakti Vishwavidyala, Ms. Sakdar. The faculty members, training officers, and the all young blood students. Somehow I was a part of the act which ultimately came into picture, the Tishakti Vishwavidyala Act. Lot of thoughts have gone into it. Before that, even it was working as an RTI or NTI executive. It was working from last one, one and a half years. The concept of the university came, our PM's vision was that some that some university has to be made which can take care of all the transports, not only railways, the surface transports, the aviation sector, even the waterways, everything should be fed from this university. The concept is that only, of course. Ministry of Railways being the biggest part of it and holding the, uh, providing the revenue for the university, providing the space for the university, providing everything to bring this Gati Shakti Vishwavidyala in a very good shape. And of course, the railway transport is the maximum, biggest part of the whole transport system in India. And it will always remain as the biggest transport sector. As Lohaniji said, Indian Railways runs 
more than 20,000 trains or 90,000 coaches, three, four lakh wagons. It is, it is a very, very gigantic system. And from last few years, huge inputs are going in to increase the infrastructure. If I remember correctly, 21, 22, it was around 1 lakh crore was invested, 22, 23, 1 lakh was invested, 23, 24, it is more than 2.5 lakhs crore invested. 24, 25, I think it is already 2.7 lakh crore sanction. It will become much more than that. The tracks laid down were around 2 to 3 kilometers per day, which is now around 15 kilometers per day. So you can imagine how big infrastructure is being created. And the best part is, or the reason behind is, it is that at present the logistic cost of India is around 16%, which has to be brought down to single digits if we have to remain competitive in the world. And it is possible only when the railway service is passing apart. That is why this huge focus of government is on it, and it is happening. Now, from your point of view, from the student's point of view, of course, you are here to learn things. You are here to ultimately what Mohaniji said that ultimate thing is the placement. You can imagine the requirement which is coming up with or which is already there in the transport sector, especially in the railway sector, because huge expansions are taking place. You will be the people, you will be the people in future who will help this expansion, who will help to stabilize all these transports. I have come to this place, I have been in this hall many times. Even once I have come here as a training officer also. Heard some lecture like today you are listening from us. This place has always been very close to the railway. We all we started our foundation course from this place only. At that time it was called Railway Staff College. Afterwards it became Nair and then now ultimately it will become the part of the Foundation Dialect. It is a very good city. It is a very good environment. You can learn a lot. You have to try to learn things. And I was discussing with the VC, Dr. Manoj, the way it is going up. Because in, it started in December 22. It is hardly one, one and a half years, one years maybe one and a half years, you can say maximum, things have improved drastically. The, it is moving in the right direction. You people have to put in effort to raise your level. There are huge, huge opportunities waiting for you once you come out of the system. But then the effort has to be yours. This, you, the guidance will be provided, the help will be provided. Uh, Professor uh, Chaudhary is trying his level best to bring in the best available in India as well as outside India. Those things, many things have come up, many things are in pipeline. He has already described you everything. So be very, very positive. I just want to share one thing. When I was chairman of the board, I used to take some feel about this organization. 
and I got certain feedbacks which were negative from the student's point of view that is related to your personal behavior inside the campus. It is you who will make your campus bias. It is you who will increase the reputation of this campus. You have to take care of the discipline. You have to take care of everything which can happen good for this place. I do not know today what is the scenario, but around a year back or one and a half years back, we had some negative feedback with respect to behavior of these students, which should not be permitted if it is still persisting. It will help your career only, nobody else's career. That should be removed if it is still there. I have I, I could not inquire it from the vice chancellor. I think things must have improved after his coming over here. But if it is there, it is your responsibility. Please stop those activities immediately. Because you may get technology, you may get all the guidance, you may get very good professors. But ultimately what pays is hard work, honesty, integrity and persistence. There is no other solution if you want to rise in your career. So please take care of that. Rest, all things are being taken care of off by the faculty and the vice chancellor here. I have very, very strong feeling that the days are not far when this university will be, I would say, one class university. So please be a part of that journey and be a proud student from this Shakti Rishikya. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your insights. Moving forward, we are delighted to welcome Mr. Sanjeev Bhatt, an experienced professional with extensive involvement in the transportation industry. Currently serving as the Secretary General of the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport and holding the position of Strategy Advisor at Gujarat Kikawa Force Limited. Mr. Bhatt, with diverse background in leadership roles and strategic endeavors, brings a distinctive point, viewpoint to our discussions. As we embark on conversations regarding technology and skills within the railway sector, we are privileged to have Mr. Gok's valuable insights and expertise enhancing our dialogue. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to Mr. Sanjeev Bhatsi. So please. Professor Manoj Chaudhary, Mr. Ashwini Lohani, Mr. Tripathi, Mr. Rajin Prasad, Dr. Gupta, Colleagues from Rati Shakti Vishwadhyale, professors, faculty members, and students present here today. It is indeed a great day for all of us because it is a kind of a foundation day of the Indian Railways when it started chugging its journey along from 16th of April 1853 when the first train ran from Bori Bandar to Thane. Basically, uh, as many of you may be aware or may not be aware, uh, Indian Railways, when it began its journey in 1853, was a part of CPWD, Central Public Works Department. And it continued to remain so till 1905, when the Railway Board was created and a separate entity of Ministry of Railways and Railway Board came to happen. And till then, it is the CPWD which was running the Indian Railways as part of the Civil Engineering Department. And that is what explains historically why the Civil Engineering Department has a much greater role within the Indian Railways because they were the, you can say, founding uh, people who started the Indian Railways. But uh, the Railways have never looked back. Over time, 
with the Ackworth Committee coming in in 1925 that the code got implemented and you had a separate railway budget. In uh, 1905, they created what was the TTCB. And the full form is very long, but still, I'll repeat it for you. Traffic, Transportation, Commercial Department of the Superior Revenue Services of the Indian Railways. That is what it was called. And in Bangladesh, it continues to be called as TTCB in Pakistan also. So uh, in India, uh, in the 60s, it became the department or the service became to be known as Indian Railway Traffic Service. Meanwhile, other departments, the signaling department, for instance, was part of the civil engineering department. It was separated, I think, in the 1930s or 40s. The electrical department also got separated. So new departments kept getting created. And the last organized service that was created was the Indian Railway Personnel Service in 1980. So what I'm just trying to tell you that the railways have evolved over the last 160 years and uh, uh, they have, they are indeed a great organization. The earlier speakers have already apprised you about it. So interesting thing was that we started off as a broad gauge uh, a railway network which does not exist anywhere in the world. The question is why did we adopt broad gauge? Or why, for that matter, the railways came to India so early, which was not there in most other countries. The railways came to India because the British Raj wanted it to serve its military purposes so that the military could be transported far, uh, far off to different places to, so that they could rule over the country. And secondly, they could move raw materials from India to the ports to be shipped back to Britain to be processed and then brought back in processed form to India and sold at a very high price. So therefore, the, the Britishers saw the Indian railways as a tool of exploitation of India. And that is what they did. And that also explains why we ended up with broad gauge, because broad gauge was the broadest of the gauges anywhere in the world. It didn't exist. And it even today, it is only the Indian subcontinent having broad gauge. The reason being that they wanted to have as big a, a, a transport network in terms of carrying capacity. So they broadened the gauge and which was much more expensive. But then it was the Indian taxpayer who was paying for it through the guarantee system, etc. Whereby the private railway companies were guaranteed a certain minimum return on whatever they spent. So therefore, they splurged money on the Indian Railways, and that is what explains huge buildings that you see even today, I mean, which were built in the British era. So I'm just trying to give you a perspective of uh, what the Indian Railways have been through. Meanwhile, uh, as Professor Chaudhary has already said, uh, the students need to know uh, what kind of skills sets the Railways would need. But I want to first tell you that the skill sets keep changing. And as time passes, the required skill sets will change much faster. For instance, in the case of traction, first more than 100, say 40 years, we were having steam traction, then we moved to diesel, we move into, we move to electric. And in the next 10, 20 years, we'll be moving to hydrogen. The first hydrogen train is going to run on Northern Railway within a few months on an experimental basis between Jean and Rothak. So, therefore, uh, as we keep changing technology, the skill sets required for uh, people who will man various positions will also keep changing. Incidentally, you also need to know why logistics is important for us. The word logistics, incidentally, also comes from the army because wars were won, won by those armies which had superior logistics. So therefore, the word logistics came from the army. And in fact, I would say in the 1971 war was won on account of three things. Good, severe, I mean, firm political will, good military strategy from Sam Manikshaw and good logistics. So therefore, logistics is always an important component of whether it is a military strategy or you have to fight a famine or a drought or a flood 
or a national calamity anywhere you have to find a, a fight any kind of you know whether or it's a pandemic if you are you are all familiar with what happened in covid 19 everybody was sitting at home it is only the logistics related companies the railways or the road transport they were out in the field transporting all kinds of thing whether it was oxygen or medicine food whatever that they were the only people or the real covid heroes i would say who were out in the field so therefore gati shakti which vidyale is basically giving you training and education in the field of logistics so <coughs> you are going to be the logistics heroes of the country now uh, i think some of you seem to have an issue with the uh, placements what i understand and in fact because i took a course here i had interacted with the students also the expectations of the students do not seem to match with what is being offered let me tell you that uh, the starting salaries in the logistics sector are not high let's be clear on that and no one person or university can change the scenario the that's the national scenario the market it is the market which rules and one of us or the vice chancellor or you cannot change the market scenario on your own so you have to accept the fact that the starting salaries in the logistics sector are slightly on the lower side but once you join the logistics sector if you do well if you do well that means you have to work hard the sky is the limit now i'll give you an example i was studying in delhi school of economics in my time there was no concept of place but some of my colleagues or my fellow students said okay let's start a placement cell so they worked hard that was way back in 1981 and they managed to get a few companies for placement we were about more than 100 of us everybody was of course not interested but whatever some people were hindustan lever came and they took one person out of 100 that fellow was preparing for civil service exam but once he got selected into hindustan lever he didn't have the courage or heart to say no everybody told him you got a damn good job but hindustan lever at that time was paying hardly 1500 rupees a month he joined he worked hard they posted him to a god forsaken place like eta many of you may not have even heard of it he slogged it out there he slogged it in various places he worked in hindustan lever for about 10 15 years and then moved to nestle and thereafter he has not looked back today that person is the cmd of nestle india limited for the last 8 years and if you see the annual report of nestle india his pay package is about 25 crores so uh, so the fellow if he had been foolish enough to say ki 1500 rupees ki naukri mein kaun jayega isse to main civil service and he was capable of getting into the best service in the civil service that is in the, the indian administrative service he said na to ias banunga ya 1500 rupees ki naukri kaun karega but the fellow decided to slog it out and that is where he is he and he has not only been the cmd of nestle in india he has been there for last 7 years he was cmd nestle in egypt he was cmd as a nestle in cambodia or vietnam somewhere and that and uh, do you know that he is the first indian cmd of nestle india prior to that all the cmds were from switzerland because uh, nestle is a swiss company and you may also be aware that there was this controversy about maggi which took place something happened and they decided that Ma- maggi contains some uh, you know poisonous kind of arsenic material or whatever and maggi was banned in india so uh, nestle had to shift out that ceo they said naturally that fellow had failed and they brought this indian he brought out nestle from the maggi problem now maggi is the highest selling brand and 
uh, Nestle is one of the biggest SMCG com companies in India. So what I'm trying to tell you that don't get carried away by initial high packages. They can be very, uh, you know, deceitful also. Because if you are going on a high package, the, that company is going to really ragado you. You may not have that capability also. And they'll chuck you out in a year or two. And then where will you be? So it is better to start from a lower level and rise up. If you have the capability, you will do well. If you don't, whether whether you start with a high package or a low package, you have to take it So therefore, assess yourself, see where you stand, and also do not compare yourself with IIT and IIS. Number one, if IIT or IIM se compare it, you should be there too. Number two, Everybody in IIT and IIM does not get those big packages which the media is reporting. There are only few of them. Everybody cannot get a big package because if everybody is going to get a big package, then there is no value. If they get a big package, the company will go bust. After उसको भी तो कहीं से प्रॉफिट कमाना है तभी तो आपको 20 लाख का पैकेज देगा वो और अगर वो सबको देने लग गया तो पैसा कहां से आएगा उसके पास उसको अपने लिए भी तो खाना है सो एवरीबॉडी शुड नॉट एक्सपेक्ट अ हाई पैकेज ओनली द बेस्ट ऑफ द बेस्ट कैन एक्सपेक्ट सो एंड देन डोंट हैव टू हाई एक्सपेक्टेशंस एट द इनिशियल स्टेज एज आई सेड द लॉजिस्टिक्स इंडस्ट्री डज नॉट कैरी high initial packages but at the once you are in middle management the packages are very decent i am working with a port company i will not name it right now i am seeing around me in that company people who started as clerks are now getting packages of 70 80 lakhs per annum so i feel ki ye to hame to yahi lagta hai ki loot hai but that's how things are. But they all started at a very low rate. And they started off as clerks. And today they are getting 60-70 lakhs. So, but if you want to start from 20 lakhs, then you have to do IIT in computer engineering. You are going to go to the wrong place. So you are wasting your time. And you are wasting the time of the university also. And you are bringing your own university to discipline. Because, as I understand, some of these students probably, uh, when they went for the interviews, they expressed these kind of feelings. So, which puts off the uh, companies which are coming to you for placement. So, they are serious. If, because they are serious, they are coming to your university. So, they, you should also be equally serious with them. Don't just go for the fun of it. Number two. In case what I, I, I was, uh, you know, reviewing, I mean, not reviewing, I was just having a look at the uh, way the placements have happened this year. I find that there were some very good companies who were offering, let's say, 10 slots. Only three people have applied. Whereas, so many are still left for placement. So, there's something wrong. A chikhasi company aaye aapya, aur usne kaha hai ki, I am willing to take up to 10 people. But only three or three, four people have applied. Rest, I don't know what you are waiting for. Because in other institutes, uh, there is also a stipulation that if somebody doesn't apply continuously for five, six available offers, then he is debarred from the placement process. I don't know whether GSV has applied that kind of uh, guillotine or not. So my request to you is, that in case you are looking for a placement from the university, lower your expectations, work hard, you will do well. And number two, I think this concept of work from home is not going to work because that was valid for COVID. It is valid for pregnant women. You are not. It is valid for women with small children. Most of you are males or unmarried. So, uh, therefore, work from home is not meant for hatte katte logo ke liye. 
तो आप लोग अगर ये सोच रहे हैं कि वर्क फ्रॉम होम मिले वो भी नहीं मिलेगा और मुझे समझ आ रहा है कि आप वर्क फ्रॉम होम क्यों मांग रहे हैं बिकॉज यू वॉन्ट टू अपियर इन कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम्स तो आप अपनी प्रायोरिटी सही करिए अगर आपको कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम्स में बैठना है यू ऑप्ट आउट ऑफ द प्लेसमेंट प्रोसेस एंड अपियर इन दॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम्स आई कैन टेल यू आई मीन अगर आप आई पास आउट इन माई एम ए इन मे नाइनटीन एट्टी वन आई वॉज ऑफर्ड अ जॉब फ्रॉम स्टील अथॉरिटी ऑफ इंडिया एंड आई वॉज आस्ट टू रिपोर्ट देयर ऑन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑगस्ट इन नाइनटीन एट्टी वन एट राउट केला आई वेंट ऑल द वे टू राउट केला एंड जॉइन देयर मीन वाइन आई हैव ऑलरेडी टेकन द फिलिंग एग्जाम्स इन मे नाइनटीन एट्टी रिजल्ट केम ऑन टेंथ ऑफ ऑगस्ट I ran up my father and told him, "Ki I want to come back." So he said, "You want to quit the job?" I said, "Yes." I quit the job and came back, <coughs> and then appeared for the exam. I was fortunate enough to get in also. And you won't believe, my last paper, main paper, was on 26th of November 1981. On 1st December, I got a telegram from Steel Authority of India that we are starting a fresh batch. You can come and join that. I said no, I'm not going at all. I didn't go because I felt that um, I'll do something or maybe I'll get in whatever. So I was clear in my mind that मेरे को वो नौकरी नहीं करनी तो मैं छोड़ के आ गया. तो आपको भी अगर if you're so uh, I mean maybe some of you are very keen for appearing in competitive exams, then I would request you you opt out of the placement process क्योंकि आप अपने दोनों पैर अलग अलग नाव में रखेंगे. कुछ भी नहीं मिलेगा दैट्स आई ट्राइंग टू टेल यू सो अगर आप कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम देने आप दीजिए अवश्य लेकिन एक ही नाव में बैठिए दोनों में बैठेंगे दोनों में ही आई मीन वेरी फ्यू पीपल मिनिस्कूल में भी लकी कि वो वहां कुछ कर पाएंगे तो एनी वे आई एम सॉरी आई हैव बीन वेरी ब्लंट टू यू ऑल बट देन आई थिंक एज एन एल्डर इट इज आर ड्यूटी टू एडुकेट यू एडुकेट नॉट ओनली इन टर्म्स ऑफ वॉट द यूनिवर्सिटी इज टीचिंग यू But ये जो extra curricular kind of ज्ञान that I think I have tried to give you आपको तो यही लग रहा होगा कि ये आ गए हैं यहाँ बोलने के लिए but then I think as an elder it is our duty and that is why I am standing here नहीं तो हम भी मीठी मीठी बातें बोल के आप तालियां बजा दीजिएगा हम चले जाएंगे हम भी कुछ आप भी कुछ but मेरा वो aim ही नहीं मेरा aim है कि आप लोग अच्छा करें because the logistics sector is expanding in india and it is going to expand because the vision of the prime minister for uh, you know expanding to a 50 trillion economy by 2050 etc the logistic sector is going to expand so much ki log nahi milenge acche log to aap log ka future bahut bright hai ye mat sochiye but then you have to take up whatever job is being offered today and You will yourself become specialist, and there will be a tremendous demand for your skills. So I, I, there is going to be a shortage of logistics. That still is today. Even today, there is no university imparting these kind of skill sets even today. There is no university imparting these kind of skill sets even today. So this is a unique university. You are getting unique skill sets. So you can take advantage of that. And number two, keep reinventing yourself. बिकॉज आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस आ गई है इट विल कीप मेकिंग लॉट ऑफ पीपल रिटेंडेंट यू नेवर नो सडनली आप अगले दिन ऑफिस पहुंचे हैं कहेंगे आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस ने आपकी नौकरी खत्म कर दी सो यू हैव टू कीप अपग्रेडिंग योर स्किल्स कीप रीइन्वेंटिंग योर सेल्फ सो दैट यू रिटेन योर रेलिवेंस इन वॉट एवर सेक्टर यू आर वर्किंग सो आई एव ऑलरेडी टेकन मोर टाइम देन वॉट फॉर द लॉट इट टू मी सॉरी फॉर दैट so thanks a lot for giving me a patient hearing and i am quite sure and hopeful that as se 10 saal baad if i bang into any of you you will say that aap sahi bol rahe the thank you thank you sir it was truly an honor to hear from you As our next speakers have presentations to present, I kindly request our esteemed guests on the dais to take their seats in the front row. Please, sir.
author with us today, a highly respected professional known for his remarkable contributions to the transportation sector. With a distinguished career, including his role as former managing director of NHS Arsenal, Sir has been in आज सुबह जब मैं गाड़ी से आ रहा था फ्लाईओवर से तो इधर से लाल बाग दिखाई दी सो दिस कैंपस हैज अ वेरी स्पेशल प्लेस इन ऑल इन द हार्ट्स ऑफ द रीजन वी एंटर एज ए प्रोवेशनर आवर ट्रेनिंग वॉज सेंट्रलाइज फ्रॉम माय बैच वी एंटर हियर एज ए प्रोवेशनर एंड आफ्टर टू इयर्स we came out as a die hard railway man fit for operating the massive system which is the indian railways and i hope because this place is having a heritage structure that is the pratap place palace i hope that all of you which are who are graduating this year when they complete their service they will have the same fond memories of this place and this pratap palace which is 120 years old today i think uh, in this year will definitely be there <clears throat> and you will have all the beautiful memories which you have spent in this campus now i have been a totally construction man from 16 years 60 out of my career in 37 years in railways i have spent 16 years outside railway in the various psus in delhi metro in dedicated freight corridor and finally in nhrcl so i will be basically in the last project which i have done it is a <coughs> very very important project flagship project a new technology is coming i have been very fortunate to work in delhi metro first at that time nobody knew about delhi about the metro system in india and the same situation i felt when i was in in hrcl nobody knew about the bullet trains in india so during the in the i think my lecture will be civil engineers especially there they will finding it more interesting <coughs> as far as the in hrcl project this first contract was awarded in the november 19 and till now 300 kilometers of foundation has been completed we have started first work in gujarat which was the land was available in 350 kilometer and 160 kilometer of the structure is ready for track laying we have completed that <coughs> just yeah just uh, i will uh, run through quickly the i think people the speed at which this section has been designed is 350 kmph and maximum operating speed is 320 kmph so once the project starts and i think 
in 26, 27, you will be having an object which is running at this speed of 320 kmph on the ground first time. <clears throat> the journey time between Mumbai and Ahmedabad will be two, <coughs> two hours. Next. Now I will be coming straight to the, this is the uh, basically a topic on technological innovations <coughs> and skills. So instead of going into the project, what is it? This thing we I will be dealing with the uh, technological innovation which we have done. This is the first time we <clears throat> in I, in 2017 complete lidar survey has been done. We don't have any land at that time. Our stretch is 500 kilometer. It is a linear project, and no farmer will allow you to go and have a conventional survey to go the, to take the details. So a aerial survey technique LIDAR was <clears throat> this light detection and ranging used for the first time in India. And with that, we have the ortho photo of the entire section of 500 kilometers. And that was sent to Japan and also to our field officials. And that became a reverse technology. With that in hand, they started the land acquisition. But generally in project what happens, they start land acquisition and then they plan the alignment and here it happened totally in reverse way and the accuracy of the radar was so good <clears throat> because up to the 10 mm in the you know x y direction and the height it may be say 20 centimeters something like that. Next. So this is just a picture how the radar is done. This is the aerial survey is done for the now new future corridors which uh, seven corridors this exercise is already in place. We are doing the data survey there also to capture all the uh, data, whether it is river, whether it is roads, whether it is houses, and all this. Next. Now, another thing was that we are having a 21 kilometer long tunnel <clears throat> under sea in Mumbai. Now, if we have a geotechnical investigation over this alignment, once you do the tunnel boring machine, these holes, whatever you do, the geotech investigation, they will they will create havoc because the water may seep through that. So conventional geotechnical investigation is not possible there. So a static refraction survey <coughs> was done, and this was done with the Kawasaki Geotechnical Engineering from Japan. Next, they have the expertise in this. In this, a there is a <coughs> two ships are there. One is the shore ship. And one is the recording ship. The both the ships are on the they are on the surface, water surface, and one cable is laid at the ground. So it is a 21 kilometer long cable which is having geophones and seismic waves are created by the ship, source ship, and the data are collected by the <coughs> recording unit. Once this is done, this is analyzed, and from this we can get the what is the quality of rock. In the where the tunnel boring machine is to be deployed. So, this is one of the new advancements which we have done in this project, which has not been done earlier in. Next. Now, another innovation, or it's a, a copy from Japan. We are making our station very close to the stations at Ahmedabad and Baroda, and that is the Japanese system in Japan, bus road and all the metro system in one place Shinjuku station or something like that you can find that it is a four at four and five stories the traffic is being dealt and it's a seamless entry so we wanted Japanese wanted here also at Baroda and Ahmedabad is seamless entry we have to enter into the yards and our building are exactly uh, coming in the uh, Indian railway buildings so there will be a seamless transfer. For this, we have to in the yard, there is no space. So generally the foundation work is being done on the left hand side filing system. But as you are saying the right, there is a boundary wall, there is a whole population. So this cannot be done. Filing system cannot be used here. Next. So instead of that, the senior pile system, which is widely used in Japan, this is a six meter pile which is supported. It is supported by this steel rings and the person, a small uh, excavator can go inside 
and it excavates the soil and they keep on putting the supports and that way we are progressing in the uh, in this uh, so once the supports are provided the concreting can be done so this is a, again a new method approximately 80 such cinder pile are being done and once i think we have a, a experience a good experience in this of this technology this technology can be adapted in the other railway projects also next then disaster management system which is the i think indian railway does not have this type of system till now there are 22 uh, seismometers are being used which will be picking up the primary waves whenever the earthquake comes and primary wave comes there is a difference of timing between primary and secondary wave approximately 30 seconds 20 seconds that gives enough time from here the information goes to occ and all the electrical <coughs> you know uh, this um, uh, line should be shut down and train can stop similarly the rain, rain temperature is directly going to the occ wind pressure is going also directly to the occ as soon as the wind pressure wind speed is more than 60 kmph there will be a drastic reduction in the uh, speed of the trains automatically similarly rain gauges are being provided at many location and which there is no manual intervention. These readings will be directly going to the OCC and action will be taken accordingly. Next. Then one of the biggest technological innovation has been done. That is full span launching method. In the 90% of the alignment is on the wire deck in the NHSR. And also you can see in the all the metros also uh, all around. They are also being placed in the elevated structure. So once this uh, full this, uh, this structure is on elevation, elevated, then conventional system of construction, that is a segmental construction, that can be done only, that gives a output of only 40 meter per week. In a week, we can do only one segment, uh, only one span. And one span is approximately 40 meter. We are at it can be 30, 35 and 40. So this is the speed. But with the launching, with the use of the full span launching system, we have found that this is 10 times faster than the segmental construction. And recently, we could achieve 12 kilometers of the bridge being built per month. In a month, we are able to bring, uh, to construct a bridge of 12 kilometers, although it is a different space, places, the nine places. So at every place, 1.2 kilometers or something like that, bridge is being made. So it is a tremendous progress which is being achieved. This system I will show you, 9 LG are being used. The cycle time has been improved from 36 hours to 16 hours. Earlier we were using the initial phase 36 hours. Now just one 40 meter completion is taking 16 hours. And the, one of the important feature has been made in India. Earlier the 9 LG, we brought it from 5 LG has been brought from China. The contractor has brought it. Now, 4 LG has been made in India. It's a, it's a huge, gigantic structure, uh, machinery, which is able to handle 1,000 metric ton of the girder. Now, the confidence gains in the, gained in this project. Now, we have mastered this technology. And this will help in future SSR project also. And also, whenever the railway is also making a big bridge, 3 kilometers or something like that, this type of technology can be used state. Next, for this generally there is a depot is a, a must uh, where this is the heart of the uh, <coughs> FSLM system. There is a batching plant, there is a rebar, this is the uh, casting is done here and these girders are being, uh, uh, you know, uh, they have been casted. Once the girder has been casted, these girder are moved in this yard by this sterile carrier, which is also 1000 uh, ton capacity. And once this girder is ready, then they are shifted to the launching entry. And this is the transporter. Once these gutter are put in this transporter, and then the uh, uh, the launching is done. This is the alignment which is being constructed. Next, these are the just uh, this is the sterile carrier. This is the base entry, gutter transporter, and launching entry. This is the, next. This is the <coughs> bridge. The way this is the already completed alignment. Next, this is one more complete alignment. Now you see this bridge can be completed in just five days. The superstructure of the bridge, foundation obviously, it takes time, but superstructure with this machine 
<coughs> this is the portion which has been completed. This is the portion you can see the piers, which which is which is yet to be completed. So a bridge can be completed in just five days. So that is the uh, technological innovation. Next, yeah, you can put this. Uh, yeah. This is the reinforcement case which is being made. This is the girder which has been casted. Girder is being lifted by the sterile carrier in the yard. Then the sterile carrier is carrying into the bridge gantry. This is the bridge gantry. This is the first stage for the starting the launching carrier, launching girder. You need four spans. To be put by this method. Once the four span has been done, once the four span has been done, then a transporter. This is the launching entry which has been lifted. This is a transporter having 216 wheels and approximately 50 meter long. This is lifted and now the system is ready for launching of gutter. Now the gutter is launched and kept on the transporter and the transporter carries the gutter to the launching entry and it is unloaded, placed between the piers. So this is a technology when four years ago when we are seeing the video of the Chinese video which were on the WhatsApp available, we are just you know whether this is possible to be done in India. But now just one year ago, these are just one year ago, this thing we have achieved. And when I uh, presented this all the presentation in the international seminars in Osaka and other places, the Australians, the people from USA, the people from Britain, they were totally uh, you know, asked that how the India is doing such a marvelous, you know, uh, such a heavy machinery because you only in world only four or five countries are having this type of technology. And China is the leader. Basically, China has already created 30,000 uh, kilometers of the high speed rail. So, this is the only four countries, even the USA and all other countries, are all the representatives from there, they were saying, oh, people are going far ahead. So, just Next, 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 next. Yeah. The <clears throat> biggest compliment of the uh, this technology was when the uh, advisor to the Prime Minister of Japan came to India and I saw uh, I, I, this, I took him to this site and by seeing this, he just uh, after, you know, seeing the, the site for two, three minutes, he just asked Gipti. Why this cannot be done in Japan? So this I consider as the biggest compliment uh, to the what we are doing. <clears throat> the Japan is basically a small country already completed 2,500 kilometer bullet train, and the progress there is hardly 50 kilometer per year. And the uh, although the design has been done by them, but they are not executing it. Cannot execute because of the you know one of the biggest factor is the land, the land which is required for two hectares or something land the depot and all these things. His deputy explained him, sir, we are not able to do because of this or something like that. But that was a a diplomat expressing publicly that why Japan cannot do it. That is some generally they are very reserved. But uh, it just came out of his you know next. In addition to this, uh, there are some more. Uh, Click. This is the geotech investigation. Okay. 
yeah when the we started the work geotechnical as all we you know geotechnical investigation is the most important thing but least attention is being given to that because when the geotechnical investigation is done organization is not you know fully geared up the geotechnical investigation is done at the dpr stage or when this contractor has just come so the contractor lnd being the most prestigious company of this country brought the machine which is on the left hand side which you have just seen that this is the standard penetration test which is being done and you have to measure how much uh, this rod which is being pushed into the ground it will be pushed for 40 meter or something like that how much every one feet of 30 cm takes number of blows are required and with that number of blows you find out that what is the bearing capacity or what is the capacity of that soil if it is taking if it require 100 blows to uh, push it then it is very good soil something like that. now what i want to show that in this the whole thing is the impact which is coming a person is holding this rod the rod is not vertical and we have to do this work in 5 minute km stretch so this is just not possible to be monitored so we said okay nothing doing we are not going to allow this type of machinery conventional machinery this you can see anywhere in the roads or wherever you take an investigation is done we said nothing doing even the project is delayed by one month or two months we will only allow automatic machine and in india at the time only two machines were there contractor brought then more machines automatic machines which is having very far higher speed and the right hand side you see the automatic machine in which there is no human angle is involved all the readings are directly taken in the computer and you have a proper record for the you know even after the so many years of the project that this is the soil found so this is also one of the i think those machines remain in india and people once we insist then obviously the contractor will be forced to print this machine next next now then the seismic stopper uh, the in japan the earthquake is very uh, uh, high in india uh, at the for the gutter to fall there are only one small stoppers are provided on the both sides but in <coughs> japanese system these two stoppers this and this they go inside the gutter and there is no question of even in the highest uh, in earthquake there is no question of falling the gutter so this type of the seismic stopper where first time made in india and now we have this technology similarly for the geotech investigation asia's biggest geotechnical lab was established in surat we have 2 lakh tests to be done 3000 tests per day and 208 technicians were involved this is the photograph of the of, of the lab which obviously once the work is completed now this being dismantled so this type of you know the contractor said that we cannot do these the geotech labs are not available in india they are refusing this that we insisted that you have the project specific lab and this type of lab was this was even visited by nosr and uh, shown to mr also this way okay. next then pile execution 100% sonic logging test was done sonic logging is a test which is for the integrity of the uh, pile you are saying this type of you know this is the something like a ecg of the pile in which you are getting entire 40 meter what is the pile capacity uh, or pile quality on the left hand side you are seeing a good quality which is showing the uh, her, this uh, homogeneous this thing and on the right hand side you can see a quality which is <coughs> poor so aim was that the this type of poor quality is restricted to say 1% or something even lower than that and then we have to devise the uh, measures how to uh, repair them but the sonic logging testing was done for the each and every part next then the for the pier cap to improve the progress 12 meter height uh, you know uh, pier uh, this thing was uh, shuttering was used bearing pedestal which is a very very important aspect we i think for the civil engineers uh, interest the biggest arbitration case in india is just because of the bearing pedestal the 
airport metro at delhi which was the first project by delhi metro which was done in public private partnership the rolling stock was provided by the lands whereas the uh, sub structure and super structure was done by delhi metro but there was a bearing failure entire in 1 km the bearing pedestal failed and due to the pedestal reliance got an opportunity to come out of this contract because they were having loss and now i think you all may be knowing that supreme court they went to high arbitration then high court and supreme court everybody has taken the side of the reliance and delhi metro has to pay 4000 crores and interest of 3000 crores to the reliance also also because it public utility so supreme court has given some relief to delhi metro next next this is the uh, track now this is the opportunity you have already having a test track 50 uh, trial track which is in your compound only 50 meter of track has been done the now track laying has started and uh, i think all the students will have the opportunity uh, to visit when the how the japanese track is being made the uh, slab track obviously there is a metro system which is the plinth type system and there is a ncrtc using the port type system which is a austrian system austrian system and this is the japanese system so this also uh, in the once the project is completed we will be mastering our contractor our engineers and everybody will be mastering this technology next this is the how it will look j slab it is called j slab next now coming to the end <coughs> there is a infrastructure boom in india and civil engineers have a challenge to deliver fast once a project is sanctioned they everybody asks when it is going to be completed but obviously you have to maintain the quality of for all these things you need a enabling environment which is i am not going to deal with it because it's a very vast subject it's a fatigue condition or epc or what type of thing what to do one thing which i want to say is that in future Although we are having a population of 140 crores, you are not going to get any labor for the working there. With the Pradhan Mantri, uh, you know, Yojana of the free food, free ration, and obviously the civil engineering workers' condition are extremely hard. They have to work in 48 degree temperature in dust and all these things. They have to catch the reinforcement bar, which is 60 to 70 degree temperature. so their conditions are very bad nobody want to be working in a construction industry all the workers and their dynamics is totally different they come for 3 months from the bihar from odisha from west bengal and they go so we have to change the method of doing the works more and more pre cast is coming now all the you know depot trainees everything or even the uh, we are going for the pre cast system which requires very less labor already lot of you know, initiative in the past 10 15 years has been taken to use for example track laying machines have come in the indian railways which is you know reducing the number where the 500 people are required now only 50 people are required other is ready mix concrete is available now even a small contractor is using a ready mix concrete curing compound reinforcement binding machines have come and obviously we have to move from uncontrolled environment to the controlled environment as well as factory production as well as pre cast is done that will be improving the quality now coming to the end i just uh, wish all the graduates who will be you know graduating from this university best of my best wishes and uh, even if they want to pursue the civil engineering this is the boom time it is not necessary to go to it and this thing as mr garg has said that there was one person who had risen there was one diploma holder working with me under me in delhi metro in 2000 and now he is executive principal executive director in one metro so this is the with the metro 20 metro running and more seven or eight metro construction work is going on indian railways there is a huge budget there is a dedicated freight corridor all this thing there is so much opportunity that the consultant engineers companies they are finding it very difficult to retain the talent the talent in jumping people are doing this metro and immediately after two years they are going for the higher position so the future your future is very good you have more opportunity than our generation in our generation it was only government job now you have government job as well as private job and lot of consultancy job 
best wishes to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It was a pleasure learning from you. Before moving on to the next session, I, I kindly request the respected VC, sir, to present our esteemed guest with a memento as a gesture of appreciation. I request uh, Sri Ashwin, Ashwini Lohani, sir, to please come forward. I request VK Tripathi, sir, to come forward. I request Rajinir Prasad sir to come forward. I request Sri Sanjeev Gurg sir to come forward. We are honored to have Dr. Sipti Gupta among us, a prominent figure renowned for his leadership and forward-thinking approach in the technology sector. His vast experience includes serving as a member of the Confederation of India, Indian Industry National Committee of Electronics Manufacturing and as the Chief Executive Officer of the EPIC Foundation. Presently, he holds the esteemed position of President at the VLSI Society of India. As we engage in conversations regarding technology and skills within the railway sector, we eagerly wait Dr. Gupta's invaluable perspectives and expertise to enhance our discussion and pave the way for innovative advancements. Let's extend a warm welcome to Dr. Sethi Gupta as we embark on the enlightening journey together. Please, sir. Uh, so good evening everybody and uh, first of all let me congratulate everybody on 171st basically year of completion of Indian Railways uh, and giving me opportunity to come here. Uh, uh, I feel very humbled after listening to the four giants of basically Indian Railways. I know very little about railways other than basically traveling in the railways. I come from electronics and semiconductor industry. And I think Manoj and I probably share a lot of it because both of us don't come from the railways, right? Although he has probably uh, gone through a lot of learnings over the last one and a half years, right? So obviously not being railway, I'm not going to be basically talking much about the railways. I'll talk more about electronics and semiconductor, where our nation is that, and how it relates to basically the future of the railways, some of the things uh, uh, Mr. Prasad talked about, right? Uh, uh, when we move to basically more modern railway or modern transport, how the technology is going to play a major role into basically that. Right? So, so I think uh, everywhere you go nowadays, uh, people, uh, leaders, everybody is talking about 1947 being the fixed Bharat, right? Or developed India. So, I feel uh, with basically with humility that 
the road or the track to Vixit Bharat has to go through basically electronics and semiconductors, right? Uh, yesterday I was uh, listening to one clip by Dr. Jay Shankar, our external affairs minister, and the interviewer asked basically what are the two technologies which are basically going to be very, very crucial for India. Uh, and one of them basically was the transportation and second was semiconductor. So in last three to four years, semiconductor has become part of the lexicon. Uh, earlier, wherever we used to go, people, we have to explain for 15 years that what do we do, what is the chip design and all those things. Nowadays, we go, uh, people like Manoj, myself, uh, we work in semiconductor industry and that's kind of sufficient. So it has become part of the day-to-day uh, lingo, everybody is very curious about basically what's happening. Uh, so if we have to become a developed nation, we have to develop very strong capabilities both in electronics and semiconductors and that will not basically directly impact the gadgets which we use but it will impact everything we, we do, right? And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that before, right? Uh, India as a whole, nowadays when we see, we see everywhere there is a positive optimism that basically India is on the move upwards, right? And the foundation of that basically has been laid in the programs or initiatives like Make in India, Digital India, Startup India, India Semiconductor Mission, and many such basically. Uh, very path breaking but foundational program. Right? And because of that, basically, we have been able to build what we call digital public infrastructure at a population scale. And what do I mean by that is that basically, things like Aadhaar, probably each one of us use Aadhaar on a daily basis, and UPI probably 10 times a day, all of you basically paying 8 rupees, 10 rupees, anywhere, or thousands of rupees also. ONDC is a basically e-commerce e platform which is being built for the small merchant, unlike basically the large giants like Flipkart and Amazon, so that basically small merchants also can participate in the whole e-commerce uh, opportunity. Uh, 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 kudos to basically all of you. Uh, Things like Vande Bharat, which are basically presenting a new face of basically uh, what is achievable in the transport sector in the railway in India. And uh, use of technology in areas like Bhashini, where in next five years, uh, we can communicate with anybody in any language without any translation. And for organization like railways, could be basically a very big thing with basically because you have uh, communication and employees everywhere, right? So you can basically talk in Gujarati and other guy sitting in Chennai will listen to Tamil automatically, no translation, no nothing is needed. Uh, now, the impact of all of this is fifth largest economy going to the third. Uh, we are basically number one in the digital payment, probably rest of the world combined, we are more than twice of the digital payments every day we do. Uh, number one, in the data consume. A uh, lot of thanks to all the young students and young people watching all the basically uh, uh, videos and uh, uh, binge watching the shows. Um, we are number two in the mobile production today. Uh, uh, second largest startup ecosystem. Uh, third largest railway in the world and second largest basically road network in the world. And hopefully, basically, when we hit the 100th year of the independence, all of this number probably should become 11111, right? That's what basically we should aspire and basically uh, put our efforts to get there. Now, Now, what all it means for 
electronics and semiconductor right so we look at uh, semiconductor and electronics as the meta resource not just basically few gadgets anything which we do today in whichever sector right it is not possible to do uh, without electronics and semiconductor so i talked about basically in few first few slide lidar gps basically geo survey all of that how will it be possible without basically electronics and semiconductors right gps is primarily basically a uh, facility which was developed by uh, when we had a good semiconductors and things like that right lidar basically similarly so lot of this technology be it civil engineering mechanical engineering railways infrastructure none of this would have been possible without basically electronics and semiconductor the ground penetrating radar and all of the basically new technology which we are using in different sector there is a element of electronics and semiconductor which has enabled basically all of those things primary function is still civil engineering or mechanical engineering but electronics semiconductor sensors communication that has made all of these sectors more efficient more better and more basically advanced techniques right so today we consume about 200 billion dollar of electronics in this country right uh and basically the expectation is by 2047 it will become a 4 trillion dollar basically consumption of electronics Uh, all because of basically young aspirational generation consuming lot of electronics products and electronics going basically across all the sector the transportation railways everything right and semiconductor which is about 25 billion it will go to about 700 billion dollars right so i think these are the huge numbers uh, 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 today basically we are talking about direct, uh, railway budget uh, probably it's about 30 billion dollars if i convert the number of basically uh, 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 which is basically in rupees right uh, and more importantly from 5% contribution to gdp today it will become 15% contribution to the gdp by 2047 which is basically very very significant number for a large economy to have one sector contributing basically about 15% of the economy uh, growth right and similarly it will contribute the uh, large number of jobs also which will be in product design manufacturing service all those kind of things so we expect basically about 7% of the population that time will be employed in the electronics sector and assuming 50% of the population is a working population that becomes around 14 15% of the basically employment also this sector will be able to get now if you look at any sector basically from agriculture to healthcare and all those things and uh, when i was looking at uh, prasad sir slide right they did all the survey basically by putting the uh, gps in the planes and things like that but maybe tomorrow we can do all of the survey using the drones right we don't need to employ big planes basically we can uh, basically put all the lidar and all the equipment on a uh, a uh, decent sized drone and then basically it will be much cheaper and much basically easier to navigate and so on so forth so it's everywhere whether it's a climate whether it's space basically nothing would be possible basically uh, today or basically in another 25 years without electronic intervention so i think if you have to look at the self reliance vision of electronic and semiconductor uh as we saw 4 trillion dollar market of 2047 uh it has to start with the products right products which can go into various sectors right uh like lidar is the product right gps is the product uh product can be electronic system or could be a basically chip uh, which goes inside a electronic system and this uh, for after we design the product it has to be manufactured right and manufacturing is basically more like a factory where large scale manufacturing gets done uh 
uh, for electronics manufacturing, we call it PMS and semiconductor manufacturing generally referred as the PAP and basically ATP MP plant, right? Uh, you must have basically heard about recent announcement in Gujarat about Tata putting a PAP. How many people have heard about basically Tata putting a PAP in Gujarat? Quite a few, right? And so four projects have been basically approved in the semiconductor manufacturing, one Tata, one Micron, one CG Power, and so on and so forth. And then to serve all of these things, we need basically talent and mentor. And now basically things like electronics are becoming a multidisciplinary activity, right? Uh, semiconductor manufacturing requires basically people from all kinds of the background, material, civil, uh, every type of basically uh, talent, including the factory workers and so on. Okay. So, if you have to really become self reliant uh, in basically another 20 25 years, we need to have a balanced development between product, manufacturing, and talent, right? If we just focus on manufacturing, then basically we'll be still dependent on the basically foreign products and the global products. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. Right? So if I basically have to assess that today, where do we stand, right? I just want to take a help of uh, 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 this scene from a famous Indian movie. I think a lot of people with a gray hair might basically recognize with this scene. Uh, this is a scene from a uh, very famous movie called Divar. Can somebody tell what was the most famous dialogue from this film? Good, very good. I have a very good audience. Generally, I don't get the answer, right? Uh, so, very first market. We have a very large market, 200 billion today, going to 4 trillion basically in basically another 25 years, right? Uh, Mirpa's manpower BI, India is basically large, uh, one of the largest pool of the talented engineer, including all of you. When basically you graduate, you will be at the helm of the things when 2047 comes, right? And Mirpa's manufacturing BI, electronics manufacturing has made a lot of strides, basically, in the last in a decade or so, right? So we have basically three mass with us, right? Now, if you have to complete the family, what do we need? We need pa, right? Basically, ma and pa will basically make the family complete, right? So we need more products basically to complete the family. So today, if we look at the electronics, right? Out of $200 billion of basically products we consume, less than 10% of that is basically Indian products or Indian brands. And some of the basically uh, people in my age group uh, will remember a lot of the brands like Videocon, Oneida, EPL. Where are they today? None of them exist today, right? So we have basically completely lost electronics products and electronics brands over basically last two, three decades, right? If we have to become really self reliant, then basically we have to focus on the domestic products and domestic brands. As much as basically we focus on the manufacturing and other things also, and that's how basically we can uh, become the self-sufficient in this domain, right? And just to look at the some number, uh, so today we are ten less than ten percent of two hundred billion dollars in electronics product, right? And if I look at the chip, probably we produce less than one percent of what we consume of about twenty-five billion dollars, right? Uh, in terms of products, not just manufacturing, right? And if we move forward to 2047, and if we take a modest goal that 33% of what we consume will be Indian products, right? With Indian brands, Indian products, that creates an opportunity of $1.33 trillion. And when I say this, I say that we are living in a global world. So we have to basically work with global companies and everybody else also. But I think having 33% of the market share of what we consume is nothing unreasonable, basically, even in the globally cooperative world, right? How many of you today are carrying a phone with Indian brands? Zero, right? 
that's basically huge market and we don't even have a single basically mobile phone brand in india it's not a basically difficult technology to build today but still we don't and we consume almost 35 billion dollar of basically mobile phones today 78% of that is basically chinese brand so that's basically if we don't basically move the leader in the right direction to basically capture at least one third of the market i think we will basically become more and more dependent even though we might have manufacturing we might have basically manpower who is working for these global companies but our dependence will keep on increasing right and same in the semiconductor if it again shoot for 33% of the market right that's basically almost 233 billion dollar opportunity so now what do we have to do that we have to make a right investment basically in all the three sectors products manufacturing and the talent so i think the pli india semiconductor mission type of things where basically we have invested about 20 billion dollars so far allocated not invested uh, in this sector i think basically if we need to achieve this goal of 2047 we need to probably put about 80 more billion dollars in this similarly basically uh, about 15 billion dollars we have to develop uh, we want to the product development right where we can develop consumer products like wearable wearable mobile phone systems in the telecom systems in the railways and so on so forth right and about 5 billion dollars in the overall talent development research and development right so overall if we do 100 billion dollar of investment i think we'll create a basically 1 trillion dollar of return on investment which is basically pretty handsome basically over uh, for 10x and 10 crores of basically direct and indirect uh, uh, produced by the industry. so few examples of why is it possible right uh, if we take example of two wheeler ev because we are gati shakti means transportation other than railways also the road transportation and two wheeler ev is a unique market for india lot of it basically uh, can be done in india because the product and oems are indian it's a indian product unlike basically mobile phones and things like that which are not indian product you might be manufacturing and consuming this is a sector where almost 100% of basically products are indian in concept right uh, it requires a lot of electronics lot of new type of the semiconductors and i think some of you who are basically electronics and communication you might be basically learning about this thing and not just cv there so many application like air conditioner ups chargers basically all of that could be basically big potential opportunity for india right drones could be another opportunity because we don't want to import the drones because of security and all of those things so all of that electronics and basically systems have to be built in india right and if we come to basically railways uh, i don't know that much about railways one of my reason for basically joining hands with uh, manoj as a visiting faculty is to understand how we can connect basically electronics and semiconductor industry to railways like whenever we have basically semiconductor electronics event i see very little participation from basically railways so we don't even know what are the possibilities but i can see now things like vande bharat right why basically we cannot provide ubiquitous wifi in vande bharat train why cannot provide basically in seat entertainment just like you get basically in the aircraft right these are the things which are very doable but we can only think at the concept level the level of the details and difficulty and the challenges we face in implementing this thing we have to basically learn from you how can we make make things like kavach basically more industrial product and basically kind of a uh bring all the latest technology to make it basically world's best product right uh for example when 
I talk to people that what is the best Indian product in electronics India has developed. Can somebody get? EVM. So EVM is the basically one of the fantastic product which is completely Indian design, completely basically developed by India, and it is one of the best products basically in the world, right? In this in its category. Right? Why can't we do basically same thing for basically things uh, we can do with the railways? There are so many opportunities which we can just basically think from as an outsider. But we want to work with basically people like you who are bigger in basically this field, Prasad sir, Kadeep sir, and the rest of the people we left, right? To really connect the world of electronics and semiconductor to the world of railways, right? So that we can understand what is the possibility. If I say that out of $30 billion, even 10% of the budget goes to electronics, right? That is basically $3 billion opportunity which we can do. And we can make basically our railway station and trains and basically rest of the ecosystem much more advanced by using this technology. So I at least foresee immense amount of the opportunities, but to concretize it, we need to basically understand from people like you that what basically we can do. Where are the opportunities? Things like Operational efficiency, maintenance, right? When a train or basically a locomotive needs maintenance, right? Right now we do it on a scheduled basis, right? But if we have basically measuring all the parameters, uh, just like we are doing for automotive and other sectors, right? We know when exactly, basically, there is a possibility of breakdown and do the maintenance before, right? And there are so many ways we can basically using electronics and AI, ML, and things like that. We can increase the operational efficiency of our basically commercial freight and basically passengers and so on and so forth, right? Give better basically customer service to them, right? And safety, obviously, uh, uh, using the new technology, be it LiDAR, be it sensors, whatever it is, right? I think we can make our transportation system. So I at least feel there are immense opportunities, but I have been in the basically. Uh, uh, electronics and semiconductor field, we have an association also, electronics and uh, IESA and, but whenever I talk to my peers, right, they don't know anything about railways. I don't know anything about railways, but what we can do. From my industry side, because industry is primarily MNCs and so on and so forth, other than few companies like Siemens and all of those things, we don't know what is the possibility. So I think we need your help in basically educating us that what can be done. And then we will put our mind in that basically how can we build these technologies and make these products work basically uh, from India, for India, with latest technologies to make basically our railways best in the world. So I think uh, I just wanted to give a broad overview of basically what is happening in this field, what are the opportunity. But basically over the time, I want to interact with basically more of the faculty members and the leaders like uh, uh, the two of the ex-chairmen of the railway board and people like Prasad, uh, uh, Prasad Ji and Prabhupada and other people to really learn what can be done. Then we go back to basically our peers in the industry and the companies and say how we can do it. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. We truly are grateful to hear from you. I kindly request our respected Vice Chancellor, sir, present, Dr. Satya Gupta, with a memento as a gesture of appreciation. Please, sir. As we draw the curtains on this entire enlightening session, it is my privilege to extend a heartfelt vote of thanks to all the speakers who have graced this occasion with their presence and contribution. Firstly, we extend our gratitude 
to Sri Ashwini Lohani sir for his exceptional leadership and visionary contributions. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Vinay Kumar Tripathi for gracing us with his presence today. We are deeply honored to have had the opportunity to learn from his past experience. Next, we express our gratitude to Sri Rajendra Prasad sir for his expertise and innovative approach to railway operations, which have greatly enriched our discussions and broadened our perspectives. We also thank Sri Sanjeev Gurg sir for his strategic leadership in logistics and transport, which has brought a unique depth to our conversations and provided valuable insights. Lastly, we acknowledge Dr. Satya Uttar sir for his forward-thinking leadership in technology, which has laid the groundwork for future advancement in the field. We also extend our gratitude to DBA Engineering for sponsoring our event. To all our esteemed guests, respected VC Sir, faculty members, and all the railway enthusiasts, your enthusiasm and engagement have made this event a success. We thank you for your active participation and for celebrating National Rail Transport Day with us. Thank you, one and all, for being a part of this memorable day. Let us continue to strive for excellence and innovation in the railway sector. Have a great, great evening ahead. Thank you. Please join us in the Raja Bhav for the failing celebration of our graduating students. It will be followed by the dinner and the picture. <laughs>